Welcome to lesson two, dietary guidelines and nutrition tools. I'm going to start by doing a brief review of the dietary guidelines for Americans for 2020 to 2025. I'm not going to go through all, all of it. It's 164 pages, which uh, was actually cut down from, I believe, something like 800 pages, which is the Dietary Advisory Committee. Uh, but the Dietary Advisory Committee uh, works on putting together dietary guidelines every five years. It's a scientific group um, of individual nutrition and health experts that get together and give guidelines to the USDA and the um, Health and Human Resources de uh, Department. Um, the USDA and HHS are, they have the final cut. So there's always some controversies in there, which I go over a little bit more detail in the soft talk lesson. Uh, but for the most part, the guidelines for 2020 to 2025 have remained this fairly similar to the 2015 to 2020 guidelines. I'm going to go over just a couple brief things. For one, uh, they really focus on making every bite count. So everything you put into your mouth, you're putting into your body, it should be counting towards health, <laughs> making you feel good. Um, and not good in the sense that sugar makes you feel good, but good in the sense that you're feeling healthy. Uh, the other big push, uh, and this is number one, is follow a healthy dietary pattern at every stage of life. So this is new this year, really looking at the different life stages. Uh, and they actually haven't done that before. So making recommendations for six months of age, at six months, you know, over a year of age. And then within the guidelines, they actually give, um, you know, books on childhood and teenagers and then to adults and then um, older adults. Now, we'll cover life cycle nutrition and the more details at the end of the semester. They also noted that diets can be different. They can be customized and individualized for different people based on preferences. There might be cultural traditions in place, um, and we can't ignore economics. Um, there are a lot of budgetary constraints um, on individuals where they can't buy, um, you know, they, they just can't buy an abundance of foods. So they might have to be pickier about the healthy foods that they choose. Now, we also uh, recommend focusing on meeting all the food groups with nutrient-dense foods. Now, remember, nutrient-dense means the most essential nutrients, so your vitamins and minerals, also your phytonutrients, your fiber, um, all the nutrients that you want with not as, min not as much uh, added sugar, saturated fats, particularly processed foods, saturated fat and processed foods, Sodium, a lot of this is in processed foods as well, uh, and also alcohol. So really focusing on those nutrient-dense foods to remain within your calorie limits. And that could be getting enough calories for some people and not getting too much calories for someone else. Now, the core elements of a healthy diet are, and it makes up a healthy dietary pattern, whole fruits and vegetables, whole grains, dairy, low fat or dairy substitutes. Remember, you don't have to have dairy in your diet to obtain enough calcium. Um, there are lactose-free versions, whether they're soy or almond. I don't recommend a lot of processed soy products though. Protein foods, which does not have to be meat, um, it, like beef, it could be poultry or eggs, or vegetarian options include legumes, um, nuts, and seeds. And then oils. Not a big focus on vegetable oils. We'll talk about this later. Um, thinking more about getting our polyunsaturated fatty acids from seafood um, or poly and monounsaturated fatty acids from nuts. Now, I just mentioned this when I was talking about nutrient-dense foods, that we want to limit foods that are high in added sugars, saturated fat, sodium, um, and limit alcoholic beverages. So one of the controversies in um, the 2020 Dietary Guidelines is that the Advisory Committee recommended 
no more than 6% of total calories from added sugar. But the USDA and HHS ignored that and left it at 10% of total calories. To make it confusing, and I apologize for this, but we're going to be using the 5% um, upper limit for added sugar for your diet study. That means no more than 5% of total calories from added sugar. Um, saturated fat should be less than 10% of total calories. That starts at age two. We'll talk about this later, but fat when um, under the age of two is actually healthy. Um, keeping sodium under the upper limit of 2300 milligrams a day. Most sodium actually uh, is found in processed foods. And then another controversy was the advisory committee recommending that alcoholic beverages should be only one drink a day for both men and women. But again, the USDA ignored this, so it's they kept it at two drinks a day for men and one drink a day or less for women. So now what I'm going to do, because I added this video to an older video, um, you're not, we're now going to switch into the rest of the material. Uh, and I added this because we have new dietary guidelines. Um, so you're going to see me look a little bit different in just a split second. The dietary reference intakes are essentially a set of nutrient recommendations that are generated for the United States, and they're taken from uh, research and a the DRI committee, so the Dietary Reference Intake Committee, establishes these guidelines after they review the research. Within our DRIs, as we call them DRIs, there is the established uh, average requirement, which I'll go over, the recommended dietary allowance, adequate intakes, and to tolerable upper intake level. Just to get an idea, when we think about our recommended dietary allowances, which is based on research and our adequate intakes, um, and this is more of an estimated or educated guess, you can see the values for the minerals shown here, such as calcium, chromium, copper, fluoride. And then they're always given for different age groups. So they look at, and based on gender, so infants, children, males, females, and then there are different recommendations during pregnancy and lactation. You'll find these recommendations on the inside cover of your textbook. The recommended daily, excuse me, dietary allowance, the RDA, is based on scientific research. A large, uh, a number of studies are done on, let's say, for example, your um, the average intake that's necessary to, uh, for health, for calcium, for fluoride, for chromium, for vitamin A, D, so for all of our nutrients. And when there's a lot of research in the area, we call it the, the bedrock of scientific evidence, then it can, the committee can actually say that there is a recommended dietary allowance for that nutrient based on solid research. When there's not enough research, and it's either there haven't been enough studies or there haven't been enough quality studies, they call this an adequate intake. And it's an AI. So we either say RDA or AI, the adequate intake. And that just means that they have made an educated base guess based on the evidence that we have at this time. So it's still, it's just the best guess at this time, an educated guess based on the research that is available. Whereas the RDA, the Recommended Dietary Allowance, is, uh, is based on solid scientific evidence. Now, when we think about that, I was naming off vitamins and minerals, but what about, and those are our micronutrients, what about our macronutrients? We have recommendations for each of our three macronutrients. Carbohydrates need to be 45 to 65% of our diet, fat 20 to 35% of our diet, and protein 10 to 35% uh, of our diet. I have in quotes here 10 to 15%, and that's because most Americans only need 10 to 15% of their diet to be from protein. The uh, AMDR, which is for our 
carbohydrates, fat, and protein is basically the same thing. It's just called the acceptable macronutrient density range. So it's essentially the amount you should be eating, the range that you should be eating for carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And notice that everything's a range, so 45 to 65% of the diet, or fat, 20 to 35% of the diet. And remember, these are your macronutrients, your energy-yielding nutrients. These are the nutrients that give you energy, and the only nutrients that give you energy. Alcohol does contribute energy, but we don't consider alcohol a nutrient. Remember, vitamins and minerals do not give us energy. Those are our micronutrients. So what does this look like? If you were going to have a diet that was 45% carbohydrate, so that's on the lower end of our range. Remember, that's 45 to 65% uh, versus, and with fat at about 30%, and protein 25%, this is what the diet would end up looking like. Um, remember, these are always going to add up to 100. You can't have more than 100, or it'll be just slightly over or slightly below. Now, what if you're at the upper end of the range for carbohydrates, 65%? So this is a total calorie contribution for the diet. Fat is 20% in this example, and 15% is protein. This is a diagram uh, from Choose My Plate uh, or My Plate, and it's the from the 2010 Dietary Guidelines, essentially showing what your plate should look like. And one of the things I think is fantastic about it is it gives a very good visualization of when you when you put food on your plate, which food groups should take up which portions of the plate. And look at fruits and vegetables really taking up half the plate. That's a very good um, standard to go by. What I'm going to mention is that you know protein, the way that the my plate set up is that protein usually is consisting more of uh, meat, uh, fish, uh, and so if you are a vegetarian, you might have more beans and legumes in this area. May, you know that could be tofu in the protein area. For grains, there are some people who don't eat a lot of grains. It doesn't have to take up this much, but in place of that, it really should be vegetables. And again, you might be lactose intolerant. You, you don't necessarily need to include dairy. If you do include dairy, it really should be low fat. So what I've done here is I've shown that we need 45 to 65% of the diet from carbohydrates. That's our recommended range. And what, what is a carbohydrate? What makes up carbohydrates? Well, everyone would guess grains, right? And then if I said a, a potato, you say that would be carbohydrate as well. It fits into our vegetable category. But Fruits. Fruits have sugar. Sugars are carbohydrates. And then dairy. We have lactose. We have a sugar in dairy, so that contributes carbohydrates as well. And this uh, is for protein. Remember, it's 10 to 35 percent is the recommendation. You want to focus on about 10 to 15 percent of your diet from protein. And getting plant protein is definitely uh, fine if you're if you're not a meat eater. We generally think of you know meat, fish, poultry, uh, giving us most of our protein. Uh, but again, beans and legumes are a really good protein source. We're going to get protein from a little bit of protein from vegetables and also in grains. Grains actually have protein as well, and dairy is a very good source of protein as well. Very few fruits are going to have much protein, although there might be little tiny bits of protein in there. Fat. So where does fat come from? 20 to 35% of your diet should be from fat. I think a lot of us think about uh, the fat on meat, on a steak, as contributing uh, a, source of, um, a source of fat, or you think about ice cream as a dessert and that's not really considered you know your dairy serving at all but uh, you can definitely in a lot of the dairy products you're definitely going to find some milk fat in there uh, grains though grains will definitely can definitely have a little bit of fat very very tiny um, amount in the vegetables fruits avocado is a fruit so uh, that's an example of having fat in fruits a uh, good source of 
healthy fats, omega-3 fatty acids would be coming from fish. And then also you think about seeds. Seeds such as flax seeds give omega-3 fatty acids. Nuts definitely give um, omega-3 fatty acids as well. So the nuts and seeds will give you uh, very good sources of fat. And of course, oils. Oils are going to be our large contributor of fats in the American diet, but things like olive oil is a very good source of a healthy fat. The processed refined vegetable oils that come in processed foods, very not very good to add to your diet.